When cataloging your collection, it is important to document both the object ID number and what the item is on each catalog record. To help keep your data entry consistent, all versions of PassPerfect software have used the naming structure to name collection items based on the terms found in Robert Chanel's System for Cataloging Man-Made Objects. In December 2009, the Nomenclature Committee appointed by AASLH released a third edition of terms based on Robert Chanel's system. This new edition includes a more detailed system for the naming of objects and increased the number of terms used to over 15,000 object names. This new edition, titled Nomenclature 3.0, is now available in your PassPerfect 5 program. When you first upgrade to version 5, PassPerfect will continue to use the revised nomenclature system, or Nomenclature 2.0, with your imported data. The object names, lexicon categories, and subcategories that were originally assigned to your object records will remain the same. Institutions that prefer to remain with their current naming structure or have created their own three-tiered naming system may continue to use the Nomenclature 2.0 format in version 5. Your catalog records will display the object name, category, and subcategory on each record and will be available by clicking the lexicon button on the sidebar of your catalog record. When your institution is ready to use Nomenclature 3.0, there are a few steps you will need to perform in PassPerfect to complete the change. During this process, you will need to make sure that if you are using PassPerfect on a network, that all other workstations have exited completely out of PassPerfect. You may notify the other users when they can reopen their PassPerfect program once the change is complete. First, from the main menu, click on the Hard Drive Backup button, and then click on the Backup Data to Hard Drive. This ensures that a copy of your current data is saved and remains unchanged. Next, exit to the main menu. At the top left side of the screen, click on Setup and then select System Parameters. On the right hand side of the screen under Lexicon Nomenclature, click the arrow on the drop down list to change from version 2.0 to version 3.0. When you click on Exit, a message will appear saying that you must re-index from the main menu to complete the change. Click OK and return back to the main menu. Finally, click on the re-index button. Check all boxes on the left-hand side of the screen, including spelling dictionary, rebuild catalogs and keyword list, and then click Start Re-index Now. Depending on how many records you have in your PassPerfect program, this may take several minutes. Once the re-index is complete, you may exit back to the main menu. To see the new nomenclature in action, click on one of the catalog buttons under the collection section of the main menu. For this example, we will use objects. The nomenclature 3.0 system is now listed under the lexicon screen view. You will now have a primary object name for each item and up to two additional object names. This allows you to assign different names for the item depending on its use. For example, let's find object ID number 1999.1.14, a quilt. When we look at the Nomenclature 3.0 screen view, you will see that the Nomenclature 2.0 legacy information is located on the bottom right hand side of the screen. You can see that the previous Nomenclature used Category 2, Building Furnishings, Subcategory Bedding. Under Nomenclature 3.0, the same object name, Quilt, was reassigned to a different location in the nomenclature, Category 8, Communication Artifacts, Classification, Art. Nomenclature 3.0 includes a subclassification as well as a primary, secondary, and tertiary tier level for your object names. This allows for the naming of the object be to become more specific in nature. For example, the primary object name listed here is Needlework, and the secondary object name is Quilt. The object name listed at the top of the catalog record will always correspond to the lowest tiered object name located in the lexicon screen view. This means that the record's object name will always be the most defined term used to describe the item. There will be times that further definition is not needed. Nomenclature 3.0 gives you the flexibility to use a more general object name or navigate to a more defined term. Some items in your collection may have more than one purpose. Nomenclature 3.0 enables you to add additional object names to the catalog record for this reason. Let's add a second object name to this record, one that will help further describe the use of the item. 
First click the Edit button in the navigation bar. Next to the Object Name 2 field, you will see a button with a set of binoculars on them. Click on this button to view the new nomenclature screen. There are two ways to search for an object name, either through a hierarchical listing of terms or the alphabetical search for terms. Let's look at both ways to make your selection. First, we'll use the alphabetic search. Change the radio button on the upper right side of the screen to view the alphabetical listing of terms. On the left hand side of the screen, you will see a listing of all of the terms used in Nomenclature 3.0, over 15,000 terms. Since there are so many terms listed, there are two ways to navigate through the list. You may scroll through the list to find the object name you are looking for, or click once on any term to highlight it, and then type in the first few characters of the name you want to use. For example, click on a term to highlight it, and then quickly type in Q-U-I-L on the keyboard to reach that area. You can then click once to highlight a term you think you want to use. For example, let's click once on quilt. The right hand side of your screen will display the classification, subclassification, and additional object terms used for that object name. Since quilt is already in use in our catalog record, let's look at the next object name, which is quilt, comma, bed. When we look at the classification area on the right for quilt, comma, bed, you may notice that the classification and subcategory are similar to the category and subcategory used in Nomenclature 2.0. Because bed, comma, quilt's classification makes sense for this item, we will double-click on the term to select it, and then click on the Select as Object Name button. The new term will be displayed under Object Name 2. The folder icon to the right of the binoculars button will show you more information about the selected object name. For example, RNMC under Source means that the original term is based from the revised nomenclature for museum cataloging and that there is a note that someone may also use quilt under Art for this piece. Save the record so that both object names are stored in the lexicon screen view. Now let's add a new catalog record and use the hierarchical selection for choosing a new object name. Click on the Add button and ent enter the object ID number of 2010.15.1, which is a ballet issue. To search the lexicon and select the appropriate term for this item, click on the Lexicon button to the right of the object name field. At the top of the search lexicon screen, you'll see three pull-down options for select category, select classification, and select subclassification. Let's select category 3, personal artifacts. Once we select this category, a listing of all of the object terms under the category will be displayed. Next select the classification of clothing and the subclassification of footwear. Once we select the subclassification, we will only see the terms that correspond to footwear. Scroll through the list until you see Slipper, comma, Ballet. You can then double click on this entry, or if the item is more of a toe shoe, you can select that term instead. Nomenclature 3.0 allows you to select a general or specific name. Pathwork recommends trying to use the most defined term appropriate for the item. Once you double click to select Slipper, comma, Ballet, Click on the Select as Object Name button at the bottom of the screen to bring the selected term back to the Add New Catalog Record window. You can then click on Add to complete the addition of your new record to PassPerfect. When upgrading to Nomenclature 3.0, there may be times when the object name you originally specified no longer exists in the lexicon. This typically means that another term has replaced your original object name. Let's exit out of Objects and then enter the Photos Catalog. Locate the record for 2000.3.5, which is a catalog record with the object name of Card, Comma, Cabinet. When I click on Edit and then click on the Lexicon button, you will see that the nomenclature screen still has the legacy information for the object name, but the nomenclature 3.0 section has a category of unclassifiable artifacts, classification, need to classify. 
This means that the current term is not recognized by the new nomenclature, and an updated name should be selected for this term. To do this, you can click on the binoculars button and locate a new term. You may also click on the Save button in the navigation bar. If a term comes up as unrecognized by Nomenclature 3.0, a message will be displayed to suggest a new term if known, or allow you to search the lexicon to select a new term from this window. You can also use the original term by clicking on the Save Catalog Record with this Unclassified Name button. Let's select the suggested term, Photograph, Cabinet, and then click to select a preferred name, click to highlight, and click here button. Although the Nomenclature 3.0 lexicon has over 15,000 terms built into PassPerfect, there will be terms that may need to be added at your own institution. While performing this process, carefully consider the addition and make sure that a proper term for this item is not already available. For more information about the Nomenclature 3.0 and the lexicon, please review Chapter 10 in our PassPerfect User's Guide. You may also download the latest version of this chapter by going to our website at www museumsoftware.com, clicking on Downloads, and then click on the link for the chapter list for the Password 5 User's Guide.